In this video we're going to look at how to insert an image into your HTML and position it amongst your text using CSS. In this example I've got a picture in Flickr that I'm going to save into my web folder. So I'm just going to right click and save image as and I'm going to store that in my stuff folder as I'm going to work on it in Photoshop um, before I actually continue and um, make it smaller, make it the right size and compress it for the web so that it loads in quickly when people open my page online. So in Photoshop I'm going to go to open and I'm going to go to stuff folder, open that up. Hmm? Don't close it though. And the first thing I'm going to do is to crop it. So the crop tool is this one here. C on the keyboard to shortcut for that. You can then double click to confirm that crop. So my picture there is about, well, let's see for, for certain. If you go to image, image size, I can see my width is 426. But looking back at my web page, I might want it to be a bit smaller. I might, might want it to sit just there. So if I just go back to Photoshop briefly, if you're on Mac, you'll be able to work this way and, and see what I'm talking about. But if you're on PC, it might be a bit different because obviously you've got a background to your applications. So I basically need it to be just over half the width it is at the moment. So in previous versions of uh, Photoshop, you might have had to do the sizing first. But nowadays you can do that uh, in the Save for Web export. So what I'm going to do is to go to File, Save for Web and Devices. And then I'm going to put it on 2 up so that I can see both of uh, my pictures at the same time. Now on the left is the original. Now granted it's a JPEG already, but we're compressing to JPEG format and you should do the same. And what I usually do is to set the quality to the lowest possible so I can see how small that picture could be. So it could be 5K. And then slowly increase it one click at a time by clicking along the quality slider until I can't tell the difference between the optimized version and the original version. So the point of that being that as I drag my quality higher, the file size gets bigger and takes longer to load. So if I can't tell the difference with the naked eye, there's no point me making the file size any bigger. So I'm going to then resize the width. You can see this chain link means that the width and the height were going to stay in proportion depending on what you change. So if I change the width to let's say 250, then it changes the height for me. So if I go to save now, what I'm going to do is to just save that into my images folder. So I won't use the crazy file name that Flickr generated. Um, I'm going to just rename that cat. Then I'm going to switch back to Dreamweaver and choose a point in my HTML that I want it to appear. Now, what you have to understand about HTML is that it's effectively lines and lines of code, like this. So when you're positioning a picture, you have to consider which line of code you're actually going to place that picture amongst. Now, last lesson we looked at how you can put in uh, an image for an email link, and this is pretty much the same thing. So I want the top of my picture to be in line with the top of this paragraph. So I'm going to put in an image tag, and I'm going to start off by saying source and I'm going to just say images forward slash cat dot jpg because I know that's the name of my file. Then I'm going to put in the width parameter and what Dreamweaver does is it knows what that is. So it knows that it's 250. But if you are in a text editor and you don't know what it is, go back to the file uh, in Photoshop and look at the image image size and see the actual pixel dimensions. So remember the crucial things are the source, so the location and file name, the width, the height, and also alt, which is um, a prosaic description of what's in the picture. So I'm going to put cat playing in the snow. And an image is a self-closing tag because it doesn't apply to anything. There's no closing for it to go after another element. So just forward slash on the end like that. Now, that forward slash on the end syntax uh, has kind of been a historical thing and often it will work without it. So try it like that. If it isn't displaying properly in all browsers, then put the forward slash in at the end. So that self-closing tag will place my picture in like this. 
because a picture by default is going to clear all of the space to the right there. Now what we want to do is to float the picture so that text sits next to it. So for that we're going to create a new CSS rule um, which is going to be a class. So I'm going to change the split view and then I'm going to change from source code to my style sheet. And think of these classes that we're about to make as tools that you can reuse. So I'm going to put in a comment that says tools. So forward slash star, then the comment and then star forward slash. And every class starts with a full stop. So you can see I've got another class up here. So this is going to be a tool that we can use to make pictures sit to the right of text. So I'm going to name it pick right like that. Then I'm going to say float right. And to create a gap away from the image um, to the left of the picture, I'm going to say margin hyphen left, let's say 20 pixels. I can save that and when I click on my design view, nothing's happened because I haven't actually applied that class just yet. So what I'm going to do is select the picture, change back to source code, and then anywhere amongst that image tag, so I could put it before any of those, in between any of those existing parameters. What I'm going to do there is just start typing class and you can see Dreamweaver suggests it. I can press return and then it lists any classes that it finds in the style sheet and I want to say pick right. So just so that you can see that fully written out, class equals and then the name of the class like that as a parameter. Then when I click back I can see that it's created a gap, it's floated the image to the right and the text is staying away. Now I can see that some text might be sitting directly under it so that's something we might want to consider. So I might go back to my style sheet and instead of just one rule, sorry one rule, I might put in a rule for every uh, side of it there. So I might say um, top zero, right zero, bottom and left on 20. Save that, switch back and it creates that margin which forces the text down to the next line. So that's the basics of inserting an image and floating pictures using a class.